So, as you know, I live in California in the San Francisco Bay Area, yeah, right in the heart, you might say, of enemy territory. We're broadcasting tonight live from Los Angeles. And despite everything that extreme California Democrats are doing to ruin the California dream, I still love it here. In fact, a lot of good things have come from California, our globally dominant entertainment, agriculture, and tech industries, including the iPhone, if you think that's a good thing, the hula hoop. The Beach Boys, Rocky Road ice cream, apparently. Everyone loves Rocky Road ice cream. Even the martini came from California. But these days, sadly, it seems to be mostly bad ideas that come from the Golden State. And so, as promised, we bring you... <laughs> Yes, it came from California, because it seems that nowadays the extremist far-left madness does start here. Legalising theft and drug use in 2014, so people can steal up to $950 worth of property every day and get away with it. The possession of most illegal drugs, fentanyl, meth, crack cocaine, now only misdemeanours. Endless policies that encourage homelessness and crime. Ever-expanding taxes and regulations that make life a misery for working families and small businesses. And then there's the energy madness, of course, banning gas-powered cars. Now the gas stove ban, which first popped up here in Berkeley, on and on it goes. The woke extremism, the climate extremism, government unions and far-left activists pulling the strings of pandering politicians, it came from California. And since I live here, we're going to be your early warning system for the extremism and lunacy that could be coming your way. Here with me tonight to discuss our fellow California natives, Jessica Milan Patterson and Alicia Krauss. Um, Jessica, um, I mean, you you know, you you run the state party here, the GOP. You 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 really are <laughs> engaged in in sort of monitoring the madness. Absolutely. And we just had our governor who left our state to go do a five state red tour. Meanwhile, since 2020, over 800,000 Californians have left our state. Maybe he should have done a little more listening and a little less talking. We just went from a $100 billion surplus to a $32 billion deficit. Meanwhile, our schools are failing. Less than 50% of our students are performing at grade level. When it comes to math and science, less than a third are performing at grade level. We have Prop 47 and Prop 57, which have just absolutely brought up the crime all over yeah. our state, and a homeless uh, crisis that just continues to get out of control. And yet, and yet he says it's a model for the nation. This is the, the <laughs> most sort of laughable thing. It is, especially because in addition to all of those facts that she brought up, I think even my liberal friends across the country that are environmentalists and, you know, want to help Mother Earth looked at these record rains that we had this year yep. that we have no way to store them because our, what, four-time Governor Jerry Brown before Gavin Newsom did nothing to it. And the only thing that I credit Jerry Brown for having two brain cells to put together is when he said that infamous statement, as goes California, so goes the nation. And I would say that it's not something in recent history. It's been something, if you look back at the foundations of less leftism and Marxism in the United States, they originated on, you know, in Sacramento, from ideas from leftists there, and at the colleges that run throughout the state here. Yeah, and that's, that's what is important for people to... Engage. I, I hear a lot of people, we, I'm, we talk to people and say, well, I've, I'm done with it, I'm leaving. And sadly, you know, we, we've lost a congressional seat in California for the first time in, since, since the formation of the state. Yeah, um, it was. Because so many people are leaving, businesses are fleeing, but actually we have to fight it here so that it doesn't go out, go beyond California. That's the point. That's why it's so important for people like us, right? That revolution that we're talking about, to stay here and fight for this state that was once golden and could be golden again. What we need to do is get away from these extremist leftist policies that have tarnished the golden state. Exactly. And and I think that there's it is connected to the political thing because the reason that they keep going further and further left and you think, wait, mm -hmm. they, they can't be serious. Now they're proposing it. Almost every week there's something crazy. It feels like it's because they don't get any pressure um, politically, and it's it's all their, their, their activists well, driving them. I moved here in 2013 and from another liberal mecca in New York City, and I remember Prop 47, and I remember celebrities like Sophia Bush and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and others talking about, well, this bill is for the children. This referendum is for the children. And, they, and leftists in the state do a really good job, and a, unfortunately sometimes a better job than conservatives at messaging when it comes to these state proposals, because they like to, like, fill it up with other things and other things that look shiny and good to moms like me. But behind it was 
making felonies misdemeanors. And when you talk to mothers about that in the state, they're like, wait, what did I vote for? Because they're uninformed about what's happening because yeah. of just the language that is used and the deception that is used by Democrats in this state. And that dynamic, you know, of, of, of just, and because they get it through, and they get it through the legislature, and they get these propositions, you know, voted. I mean, it doesn't go all their own way, by the way. I mean, we were talking earlier with Larry, you know, some of the, um, the, ra the racial quotas, that was voted down, you know, so it's not all a one-way street. But, but actually, legislators, politicians in the rest of the country, they do take their cues from what happens here. And sometimes they'll start it on the local level. I think San Francisco is a perfect example right. of that. Just the other night, we had Dave Chappelle in town, and he got to see firsthand. What was his remarks? What the heck happened to this place? This is where Gavin Newsom had a 10-year plan to end homelessness. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it didn't work. These are the problems that we're seeing on the local level, and then they take it to Sacramento, and it's taken statewide, and we have people like Joe Biden who are trying to promote someone uh, that ran our EDD, had $32 billion yes, worth of Julie fraud. Julie Sue, that he wants her as a Labor secretary. Exactly, I and mean, he wants to give her a promotion. Yeah, so there's, an, there's another example. See, Julie Sue, she came from California, messed it all up here, and, and now they want her... Actually, it's a perfect example. I like to really refer to Gavin Newsom as the male version of Kamala Harris because they just both keep failing up and can't seem to, you know communicate a complete sentence oh, that well. the American people would agree with. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.